that you get your, find your seat, please, so that we can start. So I welcome you to the closing session after this marvelous conference. And we had a very full week with a lot of varied discussions, many of which have been based around sharing conservation-based knowledge. Next year, we um, will see our EASA Conservation Forum being hosted by Zagreb Zoo, and I would like to invite their director, Damir Skok, to the stage to say a few words and issue a personal invitation to this event. Damir, the stage is yours. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, oh, sorry, the presentation. The yeah. Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you, Thomas and the team, for giving us an opportunity to show you uh, what, how we, want, we would like to welcome you in Zagreb. So I will start with a movie, short movie about Zagreb. So uh, I'm sure when you come to Zagreb, you will love it as we love it. And uh, some of these images uh, have shown you quite a touristic boom in recent years in Zagreb. Zagreb is, uh, uh, was voted to be the best European destination to spend Advent in for three years in a row. And uh, I'm very proud to say that we are fourth destination by number of visitors in Croatia. First is National Park, second is Waterfalls of Kirka, third is uh, City Walls of Dubrovnik, and we are fourth, and we are the first one in Zagreb, and we are very proud of. So, uh, in order to continue, I would like to tell you a little bit more about, uh, sorry, about our, our zoo. Uh, we call ourselves Wild Heart of the City of Zagreb. As you can see, we are one of the biggest European zoos by, with seven hectares. <laughs> no, we are not, but we are very proud of it. <laughs> we have 86 employees, but it's uh, worth to say, especially when we are talking about conservation, that part of our institution is also animal shelter in Zagreb. Uh, so our uh, catchers and our uh, colleagues from uh, Animal shelter are also helping. We are usually uh, saving or dealing with or rehabilitating around 700 animals, wild animals of the city of Zagreb. Number of animal species uh, in our zoo is th uh, 376, and we have around 8,000 specimens. And uh, we are part of one of the most beautiful parks, which celebrated last Sunday. 225th year of existence, it's Park Maximir. 
uh, in the last few years, and uh, we are continuing, we have made a lot of investment. We want to walk the talk. We want to have a modern uh, zoo in, in which we will have, uh, as we all should, have our primary mission and a vision, conservation of animals. So uh, in this slide, you can see uh, our lion enclosure, uh, our new restaurant, our new souvenir sh shop as a part of Madagascar enclosure. Uh, very nice and modern aviary and many other things. And when you come next May, you will see a lot of new things as well. We are particularly proud of our role in Croatia. It's not only uh, these species which I'm going to mention, but we are kind of a rescue center for every uh, capture at the border of uh, endangered species or lynx or bears Usually they, they bring it to us and then we take care and we rehabilitate it. Uh, some of our projects are definitely very interesting is Olm, then Italian wall lizard, uh, Western Caspian uh, turtle, Balkan snow wall, uh, which is a very, very interesting small mammal, which didn't have until now uh, such a scientific data about cognitive uh, functions, feeding, or anything else. We are very, very much looking forward to finish the study. We are involved uh, with different partners in uh, White Stork uh, telemetry research, and what uh, we have heard today about Griffon vultures has uh, definitely, we need to talk with Jose and to show what we are do doing with them. Approximately each year, we rehabilitate around six young birds and then we release them to the nature together with one center in Croatia. And uh, many of you have probably been at uh, the presentation which Diana gave two days ago about red squir uh, squirrel and repopulation in uh, some of the parks in uh, some cities in Croatia. Sneak preview, what is very close in Zagreb, um, what, what we are very proud of in Croatia. You can see uh, National Park, Plitvice, uh, Waterfalls, Kirka, and uh, very close to Zagreb, about 40 minutes drive, new aquatic, a new uh, freshwater aquarium, which will be also uh, present during our conservation forum. <coughs> now, I would like cordially welcome you to Zagreb, and I'm showing you some photos from small mammal tag, which uh, took place this year and from reptile tag, uh, tag from 2016, and I would like to point out differences. As you can see on the photo from a small mammal tag, small mammals tend to work on their number. Their strength is in their number, and they stick together. However, reptiles like to sunbait, and they come in all shapes and sizes. I hope our colleagues from Czech Republic will not mind. Thank you very, very much for your attention and looking forward to seeing you in Zagreb. Thank you. I'm now delighted to be able to present the EASA Lifetime Achievement Awards to very worthy people from our community. Each of them has contributed greatly towards advancing and supporting aspects of our work. Details of the background and contribution of each winner will be shared by a colleague. And so, I would like to start by inviting Bengt Holtz to the stage to introduce our first recipient. Thank you, Thomas. It's really a great honor for me to be able here to, to get the opportunity to announce or to nominate one of our really good colleagues from the U.S. for this EASA Lifetime Achievement Award. And it's Bob Lazy. Most of you know him. And uh, if you take this little program and you read what this award is all about, then it says directly, Lifetime Achievement Awards are given to members of the EASA community who have made material contribution to the association over the course of their careers. So, why Bob? Well, the very simple answer is, since Bob is the father of PMX, it's actually like a no-brainer. Uh, 
we owe him such a prestigious award. Although, strictly speaking, Bob is not an official member of EASA and hence may not totally fit into the criteria I just read for you. But he, or at least his work, has become a substantial part of most brains in this room. I don't think that any of us can think about running our breeding programs uh, without PMX, that was earlier called the PM2000, one of Bob's masterpieces. We may, in our daily work, take this valuable population management tool for granted, but it really didn't fall down from heaven. It was developed over a number of years, and Bob was the brain and locomotive behind that development. I know that Bob, where are you, Bob? There you are. I know that you will now say that, well, I was just a part of a team, humble as he is. And that's, of course, right. He was part of a team, or is part of a team, but even a team team needs a locomotive and a brain that can generate the genius ideas that lead to the final product. And that brain accidentally, well, not accidentally, by accident, well, at the least it sits in Bob's head. <laughs> so, coming back to the membership of EASA, he may not be a true member, but he's certainly part of the foundation we build our activities on, and his tools are fully integrated in our daily work, and consequently, he very much deserves to be proper, properly recognized by us as a community, and that's exactly what this reflects. So I have personally had the privilege to know Bob since many years, and also to work with him in different fora. So who is Bob, apart from his sitting over there in his nice shirt? Well, I don't want to give you the whole CV. You can find that on the net, and it's very long. Um, but if I should describe Bob in few words, I would use the words competent, passionate, patient, and a true friend. I'll just add a few words on both of, of, of these ones. Competent. Bob, he was trained as an evolutionary biology, in evolutionary biology, ecology, and genetics, and he became a PhD from the Cornell University in 1982, and he has published more than 200 papers in evolutionary theory, genetics, population ecology, taxonomy, behavior, physiology, conservation, and wildlife management, and a few more. Pretty much, and pretty diverse. And that says very much about Bob. And then he was instrumental in the development of both the theoretical basis and the practical application for the mean kinship-based method for the genetic management of our ex situ populations that is currently uh, being used by, to plan the management of almost all our 400 plus uh, man population management programs, ex situ management programs in EASA, and from the other regions as well. So no doubt about his competence. And passionate. I think he, Bob has explained that very well himself when he was interviewed lately on, um, in a, for a newspaper, in a newspaper and he said, in all humbleness, describes his job like this. Basically, I play computer games all the time. That's a nice job. But computer games for good reasons, to help protect the wildlife that otherwise would be in trouble. Part of my role, Bob's role, is to essentially wave the flag before we get to, uh, to the drastic situations. The simplest reason is because I care about wildlife. That is passion. And it was with this person that made him make the decision to leave the academia after his PhD at a time when this was often seen among scientists at least as a career suicide. And then step into the applied world where we'll, he will go into the career in the service of conservation through furthering the science and application of population biology. So passionate, yes. Patient, well, those of you who know Bob well knows that Nothing can bring Bob out of balance. He's always there when you need him, 24 hours, four hours a day. And since he has developed a tool that is used worldwide, the 24 hours a day becomes more than just a saying. No matter when one runs into problems with the use of one of his tools, be it PMX, Vortex, Outbreak, or whatever, it only takes a mail to get him on board to help, no matter what time of the day or night it is. And I don't know how he does it, and I'm not quite sure that Anne, his spouse, 
uh, always think it's fun. But for us in EASA, it's a lifeline when working on long-term management plans, conserva conservation planning, or something similar. He's always there to help us out and solve the technical problems for us. Personally, I've experienced his huge patience many times, and not least back in 2003 when we had a, the first Vortex workshop in Europe, in Copenhagen, where he tried to explain to me the inner beauty of Vortex, a population simulation program that is also one of his babies. And I can guarantee that during that workshop, patience and explanatory skills from his side were a must, and he showed very clearly. So that brings me to the last of the four, a true friend. In addition to always being there for you when you need his professional skills, he is also a true friend, always ready for a chat, listening to, to what you have to say, and always good for a good glass of wine. I also think I can say that he has a special affection for EASA, not to say that it doesn't have the same for AZA and the other regions, uh, but he likes to work with us. That is nice. Somehow we are on the same wavelength, not only when talking about strange presidents in various parts of the world, but also when discussing approaches to conservation, population management, and zoo management in general. So I think that Bob, in many ways, can be considered a sort of a, I think it's the right word, a closet European, <laughs> or a European wannabe, if that's a better expression, I don't know. And I think we should all be grateful for having him in our midst and to be allowed to pick his brain in hopefully still many years from now. And I say this because Despite the fact that Bob earlier this year retired from the Chicago Zoological Society after more than or close to 34 years of career in that institution, he hasn't stopped working for conservation and for us, and that's why his passion comes in. He's still developing tools to make life easier for us as population managers and conservationists, and one of his latest initiatives is the development of the SCTI, the Species Tool Initiative, Species Conservation Tool Initiative, which EASA is also part of. So he did it together with John Ballou, and it's an initiative that ensures that also after their retirement, Bob's and, and, and John Ballou's uh, retirement, the existing and the new innovations and tools for species risk assessment, conservation planning, and management, managing populations continue to be developed, globally available for free, and effectively used. And that's really important for the work we're doing. And as you saw this afternoon, those who went to the EPMAC session, he is still active with us, working with the EPMAC, gave his presentation. So he is a true friend of EASA. And in that spirit, he is part of EASA. And that, where, that is where he comes in. So we can give this award to him. He is part of EASA. So it's an honor and a privilege for me to nominate Bob for one of this year's Life Chief Award. Uh, Achievement, Lifetime Achievement Awards. Bob, please come up here. And I think... Somebody takes a picture. <laughs> that will arrange practice. It's heavy. No, it's a little bit. Oh, there we go. Good work, sir. I'm here. <laughs> Sweet face. <laughs> Good work. We have finished. So, so weird, sir. Thank you. Well, I guess I have to come out of the closet now <laughs> and be a true Iaza person. And first of all, thank you, Bank, for those very kind and generous words. And it's truly a tremendous honor for me to receive a IAZA Lifetime Achievement Award. And I need to start by thanking the IAZA Council and all my friends here at IAZA. And it's especially meaningful to me to receive this international recognition because it speaks to the importance of collaborations that cross boundaries, and not just national and continental boundaries but also the perceived boundaries we need to overcome between scientists and managers, and between fields of science, and between those who have taken the responsibility for the daily care of individual animals and those who focus on long-term population viability 
and between XC2 and in situ conservation that was talked about this morning. I'm not very humble generally because I do like receiving recognition for the work that I do. However, as Ben implied, throughout my career, my successes and my contributions have resulted from collaborations, key collaborations with many colleagues. Many of you know that John Ballou, Nate Flessness, Lori Bingham and Lackey, the CPSG staff, and others have been essential to my work, and they all deserve as much credit for this award as I do. However, what many of you may not know is the extent to which my work has been an outcome of inspiration and key collaborations from my colleagues here in IAZA. For example, the original precursor to the genetic component of the PMX software that is now used to guide the management of your populations was a computer program written by Georgina Mace, who was at ZSL at the time, and she handed me her computer code about, I don't know, many, many decades ago, and said, here, take this, modify it, improve it, expand upon it, and make it available to the world. So I did. Similarly, many of the ideas and methods that I've put into PMX and the other software programs that I've developed for conservation came out of discussions with people like Bert DeBoer and Frank Prince and Paul Pierce Kelly and Christine Luce. And these valuable collaborations continue with recent ideas also coming from the younger generation of IAZA staff and members, so people like Danny and Elmar, Philippe Helsen and uh, Tanya uh, and others, and again, still Christine Luce. <laughs> I also need to recognize another group of colleagues who don't often get the acclaim that they deserve, and that's a global network of sub-book keepers and other records keepers, and those at Species 360 who provide the database systems that you use. All of the software and the computational methods that I have developed to create, or I've created to help determine the threats, the prospects, the management strategies for species would be completely worthless if we didn't have the data to put into those analyses. So Banks mentioned that I'm recently retired, sort of. Um, I did step down from my position with Chicago Zoological Society but I did retire primarily so that I could focus even more on advancing the science, methods, and practices of conservation and have complete flexibility to do so. He also mentioned that with John Ballou, helped to create the Species Conservation Toolkit Initiative so that others can continue to carry on this work and expand upon it in directions that I never would have even thought of. And I should point out that Copenhagen and ZSL were among the first organizations to step up to join the SCTI partnership IAZA is also one of our key sponsors, and the Chester Zoo is our latest partner. So I thank all of you for your support of the efforts that I've had the privilege to be involved in. And I thank you for this award. And I thank you especially for all that you keep doing to keep species thriving. I would now invite Christine Luce to, to the stage to talk about our second recipient. Wow. <laughs> right. Um, it's, a, it's really a tremendous pleasure for me to announce the next um, award recipient who doesn't know anything about this. Um, and I'm going to be a little bit forward and announce this on behalf of all the EP coordinators, ESB keepers, and tag chairs, because what you didn't know is that two of your colleagues uh, nominated uh, the person for the award, and I think you will agree with me that this is really from all of us to uh, what is really our guardian angel of stud bookkeeping, uh, Laurie Bingham and Lackey. So I, I started trying to list all the many reasons why you deserve this award. Um, and so I'll, I'll start with a few facts. And um, there are some of the few lesser known facts, like that you once worked for the National Park Service as a mule skinner. 
who doesn't deserve an award for that? <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, ask Lori. It's not what it sounds like, but still impressive. Um, I also remember you telling us that you got fingerprinted on the same day as John Blue, which apparently is what you have to do if you want to work for the Smithsonian National Zoo. Um, and you started working in the reptile department. And in true zoo fashion, they very quickly loaned you out to what was then ISIS. Um, and you started working uh, you know, on taxonomy and record keeping. And that loan soon became a physical transfer because you, you ended up working for, for ISIS for more than, than uh, 20 years. Um, and when that ended, you continued working for us in a volunteer capacity, helping, continuing to help uh, all of our program leaders uh, in IAZA, and you also volunteered for all the WAZA international stud bookkeepers, and, and you're still doing that. So to us, the IAZA uh, folks, uh, you very quickly became known as the guardian angel of stud bookkeeping and the queen of sparks. It's a, well a well-used term, um, and we know you coded large portions of this software and a lot of it um, in response to one of us sighing, I really wish you could do X, Y, or Z, um, which you always uh, try to accommodate. Um, not only did you give us this incredible tool, uh, you also gave us a lot of really pragmatic, practical advice based on your stud bookkeeping uh, experience with uh, uh, giraffe and cheetah, which you, uh, for which you were the stud bookkeeper at, at AZA for many, many years. You also made significant contributions to the science of population management uh, in many different ways, but particularly uh, demographics and, and planning. Not to mention that you saved many of us from disaster. So all of you who have at one time or another lost your Sparks data set, you know who you are, and you all owe Lori a glass of red wine. So all of these facts are reason enough to give you an award, and there's many, many more. But I want to spend at least as much time uh, on the extra reasons why we think you deserve this and why we carry you uh, in our hearts. We, we really value the truly countless uh, hours and days that you spent helping us in the most friendly, calm, patient manner possible. No matter where you were or we were on this planet, this seems to be a theme <laughs> in the current award recipients, um, regardless of time zone, culture, or language, you always made yourself available. In person, by email, by phone, by internet, or heck, smoke signals, if that is what it took. Um, you taught, guided, and helped our stud bookkeepers and coordinators uh, with any question they had, no matter how often they had asked that question before. Um, so in doing so, you helped us understand why and how stud bookkeeping is so important for species conservation. And I hope you truly realize that by providing the software and the training and the support, um, you are an important component part of many of our conservation success stories. Um, think of lion tamarins, Brzezowski horses, uh, Iberian lynx, Arabian oryx, um, and indeed the California condors that your husband and daughter got to see yesterday in uh, Bryce National Park and Lori has never seen but worked for <laughs> for many years. But that's just Murphy's Law. Um, you did not just do all this for IAZA stud bookkeepers. You trained stud bookkeepers all over the world. And altogether, you helped many hundreds of stud bookkeepers with thousands of data sets and clocked in what certainly feels to us like millions of hours. Um, so we will miss spending time with you to do things like saving pink pigeons over red wine. Uh, but I know for sure that you're not done achieving yet. Uh, you will remain part of EPMAC as, a, as an advisor, no doubt a very active advisor, and thus part of our um, IAZA family. And you will also continue to work with the WAZA International Stud Bookkeepers, and no doubt with many other communities that need your help, like uh, those that want to save domestic goat breeds, for example. 
But now there's also more time for other things, like your wood turning and hiking at home in the Appalachians or in the national parks, and spending more time with your family, and a few more evenings watching movies with friends, uh, although that doesn't give you more sleep, because if you have friends like me, it takes you five times to watch The Prince's Bride. You'll have to, watch, you'll have to ask Laurie about that, too. Um, so, uh, Laurie, this award is truly from all of us uh, to you, our unparalleled queen of sparks. <laughs> Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, this is a bit of a surprise. Uh, Someone asked me a few days ago, essentially, how old is Sparks? And I don't actually know anymore. Um, Best guess is that I was working on it 39 years ago. It may not, it's probably not released yet. Last week, I received an email from someone saying, we want to manage this endangered species in our country. We're not able to use Zims. Does Spark still work? And I was able to say, yes, it does. Um, They're on hold till I get home next week. And then I'll I'll call them back, and I'll connect my computer to their computer, and we'll see where that one goes. I've worked with with hundreds of you. Um, It has been a joy and a pleasure. Zims for Stud Books is going to save all of us from you having your laptop stolen and dropped and forgetting to back up, so I'm grateful for that. Um, Thank you. I have now the pleasure of starting the introduction to our final recipient, myself. The third and last EASA Lifetime Achievement Award of this year will be granted to a colleague which uh, is from within the EASA membership and that requires little introduction to all of us. He is a long-standing member of our community that has dedicated a significant part of his professional career to EASA and in particular the development and further professionalism of the EEP structure that he always and rightful refers to as the backbone of EASA. So there is no doubt, and you are not surprised, I am of course talking about Bank Holst. While Spank will still serve as our Dan- Danish council member in the coming two and a half years, he stepped down as chair of the EP committee in April this year after having been a member of the committee for well over two decades and having chaired the committee for, for the last 16 years. Under Bank's leadership, the EP committee, amongst others, developed professional procedures for non-EASA EP participation developed new procedures for the publication of best practice guidelines, making them public, uh, publicly available, developed, and launched procedures for, eval- uh, for evaluation of EEPs, and later also for tax. 
Bengt has always been a very good example for the so-called EASA attitude, which is above the peer membership, but shows the dedication to the vision and mission of our association, and thereby ensuring that the longer-term benefits of the population are in the forefront of the actions of the EP participants. All his efforts led finally the EP committee work under Bengt's chairing to the launch of the new EASA population management structure and the initiation of the EASA population management center. Population management center. In addition to his dedication to the work of the EP committee, Bengt contributed to many of EASA programs, just to name a few. He was Mass Ox EP coordinator. Golden Conyo ESB Keeper, Great Ape Tech Chair, Tapia and Zui Forms Tech Chair, Member of the Executive Committee and Council, Chair of the Second EASA Conservation Campaign, the Rainforest Mata Atlantica Campaign, Development of the EASA Conservation Database with Joe Gibbs from Bristol, Vice Chair of the Conservation Committee, connecting the work we, um, we do in our zoos and aquaria with this conservation in the field and has been one of Bengt's main drivers and indeed achievements for EASA. Bengt has done his job sometimes in very difficult situations using his diplomatic skills and science mind to find solutions to problems and support to the work of our techs and EEPs. He has contributed to EASA becoming a globally recognized conservation organization under the IUCN One Plan approach. But Bengt never forgot that in situ conservation work of zoos can only be successful when the platform of our conservation work, meaning our daily work in animal husbandry, breeding, welfare and care, is assured being state of the art. I hand now over to Eric Bar, um, Bar, um, Eric Bar Iro Ruivo to say a few more words about Bengt as a person. Eric, sorry. That is... Well, I have not prepared any speech, not a real speech, uh, see. because I'm trying to talk about the person, and I am, uh, I am, I am, I am, I want to talk about the person, I, I am very emotional, I'm from the south, and I'm very sensitive to the time of my life, so I hope I will go to the top of it. But, as I said, that is his goal since the beginning. I shall protect the whole world. And for this, you need to have some qualities. And we all know that Bengt is dedicated, passionate, stubborn, when he wants something, Jesus Lord, <laughs> hardworking, brave and courageous, strong convictions, leadership. And I would like to just come back to a small story about bravery and courage. We know he's brave. The way he has faced the Marius case shows probably one of the most brave persons that I know. And I have traveled a lot with Bengt in the world, and one shortly after Marius, uh, I was with my boss, Rodolf, and I met Bengt with his boss, Stefan, at that time, in, in Chengdu in China. And things were very cold with, with Rodolphe and Madame Delors and Bengt because of Marius, of course. And I think the best thing to, to do this is go, go to have a meal and some wine and things will go much better. And so we go to this restaurant that uh, somebody at the hotel says that was a good place to go to eat what Rodolphe likes more in the world, which is a hot pot. I don't know if you know what a hot pot is, but it's boiling awful oil full of everything that you can imagine, and you eat that, very, very spicy. So he was brave enough to come, but the restaurant was all in Chinese, nothing in English, not a single, we could not order anything, not a single glass of water for Madame Delors. So we went Amsterdam, Gram, Pique, Pique, Cole, Gram, just to choose some of plates in the menu. And they start coming and put on the oil, and suddenly we see this de-gutted catfish sticking a kebab, opening the mouth, and closing the mouth. 
and they were degutted from the tail to the head. So when you put it on the oil, the head would stay, stay out of the oil, and they will continue. <laughs> but Bengt eat them, so he was really brave there. <laughs> so absolutely incredible person on, the, on, on bravery. But <laughs> he has also many talents, and uh, I'm going to show you some of them. He's a skillful on forest restoration, and he did a lot. Apparently, he's also very skillful in fixing vacuum cleaners. And I really don't know what is this, but apparently somebody told me they were fully drunk. <laughs> and, and Nate was very active, as you see. They were blowing on the sink. <laughs> and... Uh, I think at the end they might because they're smiling, or it is the wine, I don't know. Well, he's also a specialist in sport cars, that you did not know, a wildlife photographer, conservationist, that we all know that, specialist in roadblocks. But he has a man of a lot of talent, so I said, and a top model star. <laughs> wow, if you look at the pose, it's impressive. The building construction is on the skills also. And best friend, eh? that is, I know that's best friend his. I like his smile, the both smiles, by the way. And he is very smart. Everybody knows what smart is for Bengt. But he is also working all over the world. And just a few examples in Brazil, flying over America. In Djibouti, with be <clears throat> very, very interesting place. And uh, a man in love with nature. So again, in Djibouti. So just to remind you some of the things you did in your life, Bengt. And Brazil, of course, many, many, many times. Brazil, Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed a little bit. Um, but I think the best talent he has is probably one of the most great specialist I know in wine, and good food also, although he's a carnivorous, <laughs> he, he loves wine. And just a few examples. Drinking wine, more wine. <laughs> Sorry. Eating rhino horn. What is this thing? <laughs> I am very, I don't understand these things. But still, the glass of wine <laughs> to get the rhino horn with it. Endless wine, sharing more wine with our chairman in Jakarta, and beer and not wine, that might be a very bad day. <laughs> so able to relax even when he works, and I, it's amazing the number of photos that he has in this, pose, in this pose. Again, <laughs> shoes off. And. Uh, when we did the EP farewell ceremony, I think some of you already know that, we had to give him a present. And the executive office thought a lot about what to give him and what was probably the most mark marking <laughs> moment of his career. So we offered her a giraffe with a, without a head. <laughs> and, and he was pretty happy with the giraffe without the head. <laughs> Well, it was a lamp. <laughs> there was a head in the top. And I know that the lamp is perfectly well in his office at home now. And it was a great moment. We had a love of all love. But especially, Bengt, you are really my very dear friend. And uh, I'm very happy that we will stay together, the Conservation Committee. I'm proud of all these years that we have done things together. And because you like wine, I have to give you one. <laughs> Look at this, look at this. Thank you, so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. No problem.
Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was a surprise. Um, what to say? I have, I had prepared for Bob's day. <laughs> I didn't prepare for this one. Um, but I want to say that the EP committee work, the EP work, has really been a life for me. It has been very close to my heart all the way through. When we started the EPs in 1985, I was there, and many of you were not born at that time, but we started the EPs based on a need for coordinating our efforts. And then having been on the travel from where it started, where we still sat very few people, we could sit in one little office with a, around one table during the first so-called EP conference, and then see what has come out of it today, how professional we have become, how dedicated people are, and how much we have achieved. It's a fantastic travel. I love to travel, that's right. But that's normal, the, the physical travel, going from place to place. But this travel has been extraordinary. And it's been a true pleasure and an honor for me to work for this organization, but work with you because, I mean, you do the job. And I would actually use this opportunity now to thank you all, all the coordinators, the tech chairs, the committee members, the working group, people who work with this in their daily life for all the efforts they do. We take this for granted, as I said, we also take the PMS for, PMX for granted. But there's a lot of work behind this one, and you are doing this work, and I really want to thank you for what we have achieved now. And um, I would never have been able to do this without your help. So thank you so much. And Eric and Thomas, I, well, I just want to say thank you. It's, it's amazing and it's, it's a really true pleasure for me. That's it. Thank you. So, finally, it's almost over, but there is still you have something to listen to. There is a group of people in Valencia who put a lot of effort in the organization of this conference, and allow me now to acknowledge some of these people who, with a lot of dedication and energy, have made all of this possible. It's the president of the rainforest. Uh, Mr. Jose Maldonado. It's Mr. Luis Angel Martinez Juez, the Biopark Valencia General Manager. And it is Mr. Daniel Pons Mayol, Biopark Valencia Deputy General Manager. And last but not least, Manuel Celda from the Sales and Marketing Department who dealt with all the practicalities prior to this conference. Thank you very much for organizing. We also would like to thank Pacific World's event organization company here in Valencia, with whom we cooperated very closely. Special thanks to the project managers Marta Garissa, Conde and Clara Maria Cartina, and Samantha Simpson from Pacific World, who have helped and assisted us tremendously during the preparation of this event, but also during the actual rollout of this past week. Also thanks to Encarna Soler Sanchez from the Valencia Conference Center for providing the excellent food and drinks, as well as the beautiful conference space and rooms that have contributed to the success of our meetings, sessions, and workshops. The technicians and their support team have been very friendly, friendly cooperative, and patient with us. Especially thanks to Sergio Roger, Aida Genis, and Juan Rubio, the technician next, uh, right here next to me, and for their great support.
on our side, meaning the other side of this conference, that would not have been taking place without the staff from our executive office with the director, my friend, Rick Griffiths. All, of in, all involved from the office did a great job at all levels, and I have to give a special thanks to the um, conference coordinator from EASA on this date, it was Mirko Massey, but all of them, very, very, thank you. <laughs> Last but not least, I have to give you a few housekeeping notes. Buses for the farewell dinner will depart from the main entrance of the Congress Center at 7 o'clock sharp, meaning 7 p.m., 1900 hours, <laughs> not tomorrow morning. <laughs> Departures of the restaurant for drop-off at the venue will start at 2300 hours until 1 o'clock in the morning. Please do not forget tonight the ticket for the gala dinner, which you got when you registered. And your name badges are not needed, but you can wear them if you want. For the delegates that would like to continue to party afterwards, it's advised not to take the bus, but to walk down the beach to other restaurants or bars or take the taxi. From midnight to one o'clock, you will have to pay for the drinks, so please bring money and all your cards. Together with the conference certificate of attendance, there is an evaluation survey in your inbox now. Please help us out in further improving the quality of our conferences by filling out the short survey. It will take only about five minutes. Conference proceedings will become available later on the other member area, and you will be notified about that. Don't forget to leave any kind of conference material in the recycling boxes in the foyer. A recycling company will pick up and process all unwanted conference materials. I would like now to invite our current host, Daniel Pons, to the stage for his closing words. So, good afternoon. I had a long list of things, but Thomas did most of them, so um, I have almost nothing to say. But I wanted to say, a couple of things. The first one is that we are really, really happy that you came. We hope that you enjoy Valencia, and we really hope that you enjoy our park, and we were able to explain you a little bit what is our philosophy and the way we see conservation, okay? For us, this was a very important event. I think it's been extraordinary. I think it's been a lot of fun, and well, for us, it will be an, an event that will be remembered. Then, I just want to do, say thank you to two more groups. The first one is to our employees, the ones that have been working for us for the last 15 years, both in Biopar Fongirola or Biopar Valencia, that have helped us to take our park to where it is right now. And it's been, they've been with us when it was good times and it was bad times, and without them, I mean, we won't even be here. And the second thank you is to all of you for coming. That's all, thanks for coming. And now I invite our next host, Jörg Junold, please come to stage for the flag and over. Thank you, dear colleagues and friends. I can't tell you uh, how extremely proud I am standing here in front of you for the second time.
to invite you for an annual conference. You may remember the year 2003, when we were just half the size, but had a lot of fun uh, in Leipzig. And we want to invite you again. You see the date here on the chart for end of September next year. And we are all looking forward uh, to being such a good host like our previous host here in Valencia. And you have heard a lot of data and a lot of science this week. And I could tell you a lot of our beautiful city and a lot um, of our beautiful zoo. But I just want to give you three reasons uh, to coming to Leipzig. The first is, of course, our wonderful city. And for those who don't know where Leipzig is situated, it's directly in the heart of Europe. So it's quite easy for all of you, whether you live in the north, in the south, in the east, or west of Europe, to join the conference of next year. And our city is not too big and not too small. And it's an ancient city. It's a very historical city. It's full of culture. But it's also vibrant and has an enormous change during the past 30 years. And I just want to show you some pictures how beautiful my home city is. There's a second reason. It's a conference center directly in the front of the zoo, owned by the zoo. You can see on the left side, it's our main entrance. On the right side, in the back, you can see our Gondwana land. And that Congress Hall was completely redecorated by us in the year 2015, or until the year 2015, is now run professionally by the Leipzig Trade Fair. And our Biggest hall is up to 1,000 people, so we have still a little bit potential to grow until next year. Um, and we are quite happy uh, to get this Congress Hall for the conference date to have our conference there. And there's a third reason, of course, it's our zoo. And you may know that like the city has changed during the past 30 years when the wall came down in the eastern part of Germany, also the zoo has changed. And we having developed a master plan and having invested a lot. And I just uh, don't like to bore you with figures and facts. I just want to give you some nice pictures of the zoo. And then I say, welcome to Leipzig. And we are really looking forward as a team to host you next year.
So folks, after now 57 tech meetings, seven EP meetings, 23 workshops, five plenary sessions, 53 posters, 16 committee meetings, one marvelous and inspiring zoo visit, one council meeting, but also after eight coffee breaks, two snack breaks, and four lunches here in the house, I want to thank everybody for and wish you a great evening, and I look forward to seeing all of you in Leipzig next year. And here is a closer conference. Thank you for your attendance.